the world now recognizes the inherent potential of various forms of renewable energy, especially wind energy. And yet there exist few organizations endowed with the technical capability to effectively harness this clean energy. Mitra, with its end-to-end -end expertise in clean power generation, is one of them. With over 650 wind turbine generators spread across nearly 20 wind farms in nine states, Mitra provides 2,000 megawatts of renewable power to millions of Indians. But is it easy to pioneer change on such a large scale and harness the might of the wind? Wind is the fuel of the business we are in. Identifying the right side is the fundamental stuff when you are just building a wind farm. There are a lot of misconceptions associated with this as well. One of such misconceptions is, you know, if my site is very close to a coastal terrain, or I mean if I'm really up in the hill, I will be getting a good wind speed. So it's all about, you know, where my geographical position of the site is. Previously, wind farms were set up only in areas with high wind potential. Today, advancements in technology provide companies the opportunity to harness wind power even from low wind locations by using wind turbine generators made specifically for such conditions. The site identification consists of different activities. First activity is a desktop study. During the desktop study, we will be checking the different wind speed patterns, what are the different areas where wind potential is available. So one such data will be Nivea data, then second data will be MISO data. So all this data will help us to get a feel of the areas where wind potential is available. So once we get a preliminary understanding of this data, we will be marking these areas across our various databases with the help of Google Earth. So once we have identified the area, our team will be doing a site visit where we will be physically verifying the different locations that we have marked in our desktop study. After locking on to a location of optimum wind potential, the Wind Resource Department installs a weather monitoring station called the Windmast or Metmast. The Windmast functions for an entire year through all seasons recording temperatures, wind speeds, and wind direction. So I'll be using my two years of data set that I have measured from my site. I'll be overlapping this long-term data set, the satellite data that I'm getting from different sources on top of this. I will be checking for the correlation and I will be stretching, literally I'll be stretching my site measurement to 20 years. Essentially what it will do is, it will remove the high wind year and low wind year and I will be getting a mean wind resource of my site. Once the location for the wind farm is confirmed, the Department of Power Resource Systems Study evaluates the process of power evacuation and designs the plant's power system. Once we talk about PRSS, there are many other designs which comes, but one of the main critical factor in the design is on the evacuation front. So whenever there is a wind forum being identified, we have planned the entire infrastructure in such a way that it meets the grid requirement to ensure that the evacuation can be done with, without any constraint. Out of the design, we need to derive out the estimates. So the estimate forms the basis for the estimation of the budget of the whole project that we are going to implement uh, in the coming years. Based on the type of wind zone and the soil at the site, the project's team discusses and finalizes the model and height of the WTG. This is a crucial step in ensuring unobstructed and optimal power generation on any terrain. We sit with the different manufacturers and we evaluate their technology and we take a final decision which technology is best for that particular site in terms of height, in terms of rotor diameter of the turbine and the soil conditions and the wind pattern of course in that area. To study the impact of the prospective wind farm on the environment and individuals in the vicinity, the QSHE and Systems Department conducts environmental and social impact assessment. ESIA study. The study adheres to performance standards and safety principles set down by institutions like the International Finance Corporation, 
the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank, as well as other applicable statutory requirements. We capture the different parameters, suppose the environmental parameters, air, water, noise, land, these are the main parameters. There we are seeing that if any significant impact is there in case of the activities we are doing for the wind projects or the solar projects. Similarly, the biological impact that is very, very important thing. Maybe birds, maybe animals. Maitra is very keen to preserve the environment, the ecology. So definitely for before starting any projects, we are doing the ESI study to find out that if any significant impact is there or not. If any significant impact is there, definitely we are taking the environmental management plant also. Once we get the clarity about the land acquisition, uh, then we do the soil testing of that particular location because construction of foundation and uh, is dependent upon the soil bearing capacity and other parameters of the soil there. It may be some hard rock, it may be black and soil, or it may be mud. Accordingly, we design that foundation. Once the foundation is constructed, we make the ender area free to do the erection. The transmission lines are the lifeline of the project, you know, because uh, that thing line bridges my power generation point and to the nearest uh, delivery point. The substation is the heart of a wind farm, connected to all WTGs through transmission lines. A dedicated SCADA system is deployed at each WTG to monitor all aspects of operations and maintenance and communicate production details on a real-time basis. So once the asset is moved over into the asset management team, into operation, then the objective is to run that asset as efficiently as possible to generate the maximum amount of revenue, whilst at the same time ensuring that it will continue to run for its entire life. So it's a balance between maximising revenue today and ensuring long-term reliability of the asset. These giant wind turbines can generate a large amount of clean energy every single minute. It is very important, therefore, to ensure that any technical issues are resolved quickly. Basically, any plant, wind farm uh, or solar plant comes up uh, for operation maintenance activity. We are deputing uh, first level of monitoring at site level. We are deputing uh, Maitra engineer at site. His basic role is to day-to-day -day basis maintain the complete generation availability of, of site and coordinate with the OEM suppliers for prompt response on preventive maintenance and breakdown maintenance. And second level monitoring we are doing at Hyderabad office. We have a GMC control center where all turbines are connected at our GMC Hyderabad. From here we round the clock 24 into 7 we are monitoring all turbines for their performance, for their availability, for their breakdown and their generation. Like this cycle continues day-to-day -day basis round the clock, round the month, round the year. 